Hello, this is Jeff Mutti with RCR Wireless News, and today we're speaking with Chris Hart, who's head of business development for NSN about um, LT public safety networks. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for taking the time. So I, um, I, I recently saw a blog post that included a uh, Yankee Group Ken Rayburn uh, white paper talking about the the uh, some tests LT public safety tests that went on. Uh, can you maybe talk about the value of these these pilots uh, to the first responder groups and, and then also to NSM? Yeah, sure. Um, so the white paper that uh, that you refer to from Ken, uh, Yankee Group, that basically we went through three uh, separate um, solu system solutions. One was at the RNC in Florida. One was at the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Uh, the other one was in uh, Des Moines in Iowa. And so there have been three different uh, sort of pilot projects that have been done. And Ken sort of wrapped up the, the messages from each of those, what we'd found, some of the benefits that we'd seen, some of the things I think that we need to look further at and, and keep our eye on as we, we go ahead and build out this first net network. Um, I think the, there's some big takeaways out of all three, and, and they were highlighted quite nicely in the paper. I think that the number one is that video is the key. I think the, what came out of the Band 14 uh, implementation of LTE and, and the application that was, that was shown in all three is that all three had a huge video component. It, it added an awful lot to, um, to the first responders that were involved um, or the community, uh, um, the community uh, emergency response team that was involved. I think each of them found that, that, in fact, suddenly the quality and depth of information that they were getting just had that extra dimension. So I think that was the biggest takeaway from, from all three. Um, I think also there's, there's been a number of other takeaways from each of them. In each of those pilots, um, it was multiple companies involved in putting the pilot together. And I know that FirstNet and, and the first responder community has been concerned about interoperability and how will everybody uh, play in this. And I, I think if you look, you had Harris, you had NSN, you had Cisco, you had Raytheon, and it, and it didn't just end there. So I, I think it was a good sort of cross-section of companies uh, involved in, in these pilots. Um, so I, as I say, I think that each of them had their merits, and um, I think each of them really the message I, get, I think that sort of aggregates from all of them is just that video is the key. Could you talk a little bit about some of the first responder groups that were actually involved and in how they were using the video or some of the, you know, the applications they were testing? Yeah, so if you, I, I think an interesting one would be to look at Des Moines in Iowa where they, they set up uh, an emergency situation um, and they brought in the medical response team as well as the as, as sort of fire and so uh, and the the police in at that, and I think one of the interesting parts about what they did in Des Moines is that essentially they set up the the system where they had the BAM 14 radio, but they put a Wi-Fi hotspot off the bottom of the BAM 14 radio. They connected a lot of medical devices on Wi-Fi to the to the BAM 14 radio. And so they looked at a, an emergency response to a, an incident, a staged incident, but I think they managed to bring in a number of other um, sort of parties. And I, to me, I think one of the issues that we've always faced with, with our first net and what's been done on public safety is that I think the end user perception of what they're going to get is something that has been a bit of an unknown. And if you look at these pilots, I think the pilots have just been a, a really good way of low cost setting something up, getting it going, and giving people a chance to just see what sort of capabilities they could expect. Um, I think if you look at, say, uh, what was done for the Super Bowl, they brought in this community uh, emergency response team, and they got a number of people to walk around essentially with. 700 megahertz band 14 connected radios and video connections and so there it wasn't necessarily what you'd see as a sort of you necessarily equate with your first responder but it was a group that was there to try and facilitate the smooth running of, of uh, 
an event like Super Bowl. And I think they found that very interesting because, they, again, the quality of information and the depth of information they got from the video, I think, just provided that extra dimension. Um, I think if you go back and look at the RNC, the RNC, again, th there you have um, a setup really around uh, a convention in a, in a set place. Again, looking at Wi-Fi, they put a set up a Wi-Fi hotspot. I, I think a number of people got a chance to come in and just get a feel for what was possible. And um, I mean, if I, I think if I look beyond just those three sort of uh, pilots that were done, I think if you look at the uh, the amount of learning that was given to different groups out of such a small, low cost effort, I, I think it's one of those things that beyond, say, the BTOP development that's going on at the moment, I think the, you could see that if, if the uh, first net or the states can facilitate more of these, then there's some just great small lessons and it just builds up that depth of understanding in the end user groups as to what to expect. Well, you mentioned video, you mentioned interoperability, uh, you mentioned Wi-Fi. Um, what were some of the other capabilities that Innocent uh, showcased or uh, facilitated as part of these tests? I think, uh, so from our perspective, it was a good demonstration of our uh, Band 14 LTE capabilities. Um, we obviously uh, are sitting where, where we bring other people along with us when, whenever we're looking to put together a public safety solution. So Harris, our, our, um, our interaction with Harris uh, and what they can bring in terms of public safety, I think that went really well. I think if you look at what happened in uh, in Iowa, there was a demonstration of roaming between the Band 14 network and US Cellular, and that worked seamlessly. So I think if you look at just, you know, what I think from a commercial perspective, people expect to happen, but perhaps in a in a public safety, they haven't necessarily seen this happen. But I mean, if you look at roaming from one one network onto another and not in the same band, if you look at what was delivered in terms of the quality of bandwidth off of the band 14 radio, I think we we were pretty pleased with how that went and very pleased with how the interaction went with the people around us. As I say, Cisco was there, Raytheon was there, Harris was there, so. I, I think those are the sorts of things that in, in the real world are going to matter is how everybody uh, can work together to put this thing up and then the quality of experience and I, I, I think we were just really pleased with the end, the end uh, output on that. What do you see as some of the challenges for FirstNet past the VTOP grants? Well, so I think firstly, if I go back and look at what was discussed right at the beginning of all this, I think the choice the choice of going LTE is a great one. I, I think people are starting to understand what can be delivered off of that. And I think the fact that they, they're heading for a standards-based implementation is, is going to reap re real benefits going forward. I think if I, if I look back and I look and say, well, really, I think part of this was about the fact that there was some sort of, there was a little bit of envy in the sense that if you look in the commercial world and you look at the amount of innovation that's being generated around mobile networks and just the plethora of, of people getting in on the act, um, I think people looked at that from a public safety perspective and thought, well, I wonder how could we start bringing those sort of capabilities, all that innovation into our area? And to my mind, I think one of the, I, I think there's been some great things move, just just moved forward by FirstNet in the last sort of year that, that that's been in existence. I, I think one of the challenges that they're going to have to face is how do they make this as inclusive as they possibly can? So in other words, how do you foster the guys who can bring this innovation to come in and participate? And I, I don't underestimate how how difficult that's going to be at this point. You know, they they I think they have to look at their own procurement rules and so on that they've got and how they want to uh, develop and, and put this whole thing out of bid, how they want to package it up. And I just I think that what we're seeing is we're seeing some some potential benefits that can be had from just take, bringing on all this innovation and, and opening up to this community. And if they can make you know create an environment that fosters those guys 
to bring their innovation, come along and play. I, I think that will be a real win for everybody in this. Well, in wrapping up, you know, we're here on the heels of the 12th year anniversary of September 11th, and in my opinion, you know, one of the things uh, that, that was a catalyst for the LT public safety discussion was greater interoperability, greater cooperation for first uh, first responders in the event of catastrophe. And you, you know, today you've got the municipalities that have a network, you've got the counties that have a network, and oftentimes they, they just don't work. Uh, so in your opinion, uh, where are we in this uh, goal of having interoperable uh, IP-based standard networks? Are we in the first inning, third inning, ninth inning, and you know, what do you see as the next big milestone? So I, I think I, I don't believe we're in the first inning because I think there's already been made some decisions that facilitate exactly that. Um, and I think the, you know, we obviously there's interoperability between the emergency services, as you so rightly said, that came out of the 9-11 Commission. I think there's the issue about being able to bring assets into a particular area where there may have been a disaster of one sort or another and make them field operational as soon as quickly as possible. And I, I think those sorts of things, there have been some fundamental decisions taken so far that actually enable that to happen. So I, I, I don't think we should be pessimistic about um, the chances of achieving those goals. I, I think at this point we've sort of made some great decisions. I think the, the FirstNet uh, board um, have got a, a nice sort of breadth of expertise there. Um, I guess at this point it's probably just going to be that we're into the maybe the second third inning and it's how do we how do we execute from here and how do we make sure that some of the early decisions that have created opportunity don't sort of become negated by the way we implement from here on in. Um, I, I do think there's there's obviously a, a concern around the speed at which we've, we've managed to get as far as we have, uh, especially considering, uh, you know, we, we just celebrated an anniversary um, the other day. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that what's going to happen is that this will pick up pace. I, I think the more the BTOPs will go out, um, and I think there'll be a lesson of learning, a series of learnings from that. As I said, I think there are some other smaller things that can be done on pilots, but underlying this, there has to be that sort of relentless progression towards a full-blown uh, network and the procurement activity and and the build activity around that. But I, I'm I'm less pessimistic about it. I just I think there's some great foundations been laid, and we just need to take advantage of them. So, what's the next milestone? To, to see whether the I'll next milestone. I, I I think the next big milestone is going to be uh, going into the RFPs. There's been a number of RFIs issued. It's RFP, and then it's going to be selection. And to my mind, the biggest milestone in that is just the, the guys at FirstNet figuring out how they, in what way they want to build this. Do they want to build it at a national level or do they want to build it at the state level? How, I, I think that's the next big step and, uh, and starting that procurement activity. Um, as I say, the RFIs have been out. I think there's an RFP process that's naturally coming straight after that. Um, and I, I think it's that procurement process, I keep coming back to it, but I think that's where they can, they can really make a big difference because they can really foster a lot of people to come in and offer the sort of capabilities that, that the network's capable of providing just from its base technology decisions. Okay. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much.